Alright guys, we finally made it to the 60th Objective C tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be starting to work with files. Now in the last 59 tutorials all we did is pretty much build programs right from here, ran them and they outputted stuff, maybe they calculated some things on the screen, but we never really actually created a new file or did anything really interesting to alter our computer system. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial and this is very crucial to all your programming from now on and the thing is that it can get really confusing because there are a lot of very small subtleties that you need to watch out for and also there is a lot of information that we need to cover just to create one basic file so uh... you know if you, you have to pay attention to any tutorial make sure it's this one so the first thing that we want to do is create a basic text file and we want to do this manually so we have a file to work with later on that we have one to copy around change the name of it maybe so here's what we want to do in your Xcode toolbar at the, at the, excuse me, the top of the screen go ahead and click file new file and what we want to do to create a basic text file is go ahead and click other on the left hand side and click empty file right here now empty file we can create a text file from go ahead and click next and just name your new empty file anything you want tester file name it something that is pretty obvious that it's a tester file now check this out when we're working with a file path and the file path is pretty much the location right here we want to put this new text file in the same folder or directory that our program runs in so if we're saying alright this is what we're running our program and this is where we're creating everything not so fast. Xcode set up your program kind of weird that it put where the program runs in a different folder so this is one thing you have to watch out for. Go ahead and click choose and then in your build and in your debug this is where your actual program runs from. You can see Bucky test right there. So go ahead and click choose and now your tester file is in that build debug it's in the same directory where your program is running from and that's what we wanted and we're saying alright why do we need it in the same directory well technically you don't need it in the same directory but it's really useful when you're trying to give your computer program I mean you need to tell it where the file is located so instead of having to type out a whole long path you can just type the file name and it will just look in that directory first so check this out they should be all in the same directory maybe your uh, tester file may be up here but anyways now that we have a tester file type in something like my name is Bucky and I like ham now go ahead and uh, file save this at the top and now that we have a save text file with anything in it I mean it really doesn't matter what contents are in this as long as there's something in it we can go back to our Bucky main program actually just click on source and uh, now we can go ahead and learn what we want to learn and um, but before I even do that check this out in our finder make sure you go to your username mine's white blue 1942 in your documents documents Bucky test build debug check this out we have the tester file right here. Now go ahead and just move this to the side of the screen. Don't close it because whenever we create files we can see them popping up right in here and it's pretty cool. So anyways with all that we can finally begin typing some code in our dumb program. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell our computer program where that file is. So make a string object ns string and just name your object tester file I mean you can name your object anything you want but if you name your object the same thing as your file name which was tester file then it's really obvious like when you're working with your files to see what object references what file so now that we have pretty much the path of the file and again here's what I was talking about we usually would have to give it a huge path like user uh, user white blue 1942 and then you know that 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 but since it's in the same directory we can just reference it from the same file name so that's why I wanted to do that makes it a lot easier so after we're done building the path which is pretty much a string object what we want to do is we need to build something called a file manager and this is from the class ns file manager and you can name your thing your file manager anything you want I'm gonna name my manager so it's really easy to see 
what it is. I like to name everything really obvious so I don't get confused. What a file manager does is it allows you to use the built-in methods that are made for working with files. I mean, just like any other object, pretty simple. So in order to actually create your manager, go ahead and put manager or whatever you named your object and set it equal to, again, not those, these, there we go, that's a little bit better, an NS file manager and you want to call a method called default manager and what this method is going to do is it's going to make a manager for you a file manager and it's going to store it in the object manager so anyways what we have now is pretty much this manager object and with this manager object we can work with files create files copy files rename files if we want so with that being said all I'm going to do in this tutorial is check this path right here and make sure that this file exists so go ahead and do this make an if statement if and what I'm gonna do is call a method called file exists at path using manager object and remember since we have access to the NS file manager class there's a method in here called file exists at path and all this does is it returns yes if it does exist and no if the file does not exist so the path we want to use is actually this string right here so go ahead and put tester file and what it's going to do is this object is equal to the path so when it asks for a path we can just give it a tester file and bam check this out pretty simple so go ahead and go ahead and set this equal to no so if the file doesn't exist that means we have an error in our program so what do we want to do if the file doesn't exist ns just log an error message on your screen anything you want but like, file does not exist explanation point and return one we're going to be making a bunch of error messages and each error message is going to have a different return value so then if it returns like four we know it's that error so go ahead and just name this return one and build and run this and see if we got anything interesting perfect it says program exited with status value zero that's good that is exactly what we wanted now check this out if um you had a thing called tesser file you know 34 this obviously is a file that doesn't exist the only file that exists is tester file right there so let's go ahead and run this save and see what would happen file does not exist so that's what we wanted our error message is working fine so let's go ahead change this back run it again make sure we get exited with status value zero and we are good to go for the next tutorial so this is how you can build a basic file manager whatever path you're working with pretty much means whatever file you want to check for and check if that file exists so pretty simple stuff if just make sure you follow all those little things I told you those little tips and tricks and in the next tutorial we're going to be doing actually some cool things that files besides just testing if it exists so uh, thank you guys for watching I'm gonna copy all the source code put it in the uh, forum links below so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later